Welcome back, Chiefs Kingdom. It is time for a game preview. We're going to give you the power ranks, the matchups, the keys, and our predictions to this game against the uh, Los Angeles Chargers. And we're going to start with some news. I'm just glad that I remembered how to say it. Uh, welcome to Locked On Chiefs. It's the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. From the land of the free and the home of the Chiefs, this is the Locked On Chiefs podcast. And welcome back to another Locked On Chiefs. It is a red Friday, and as you can tell, I'm not in my normal setup. So my apologies ahead of time. I'm on vacation, but I am here for you. So (laughs) apologize about the video because it's not the best and the audio is not the best either. And that is my fault and apologies. Uh, But here we go. Here is our game preview for the Los Angeles Chargers. Hey, things happen. People got to go places. I'm just glad you made it. And folks, um, you know, I can see that I can see the ocean from where I am. So, yeah, I'm definitely on vacation and ready to go down to the beach. Well, that might be your new normal. My new normal, folks, check out the Locked On NFL Draft. Me and Eric Crocker have taken that thing over and doing away with it. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's over on its own feed. It's the old show that Trevor Sikama and Ben Solak had. Uh, now with Eric Crocker and myself, that's the Locked On NFL Draft all the time. Getting ready for that next one. So we have a ton to talk about today. I a little bit of news. We'll start here because I think it's important. All of us were concerned about what was going on with the safety position. Mm-hmm. Steve Spagnuolo came out and said specifically they're not going to make a, a change out of being concerned. They're not going to overreact to anything. That sounds like Juan Thornhill is not going to get a start, that they're not going to go away from uh, the missed tackle machine that is Dan Sorensen. Yeah, and I did also think that it was very intriguing that they said that Daniel Sorensen doesn't miss tackles because he's soft. (laughs) That's a great way to put it. Uh, He's definitely not soft. I never would have said that he was soft. That's definitely not how I would describe Daniel Sorensen. But to know that they're not going to make a change and they're not going to go with the guy that's more athletic and then gives them more ability. That really says to me that there's something more going on there that we just don't know. Yeah, I, I agree. The The other comment specifically about one Thornhill what, from Spags was that, uh, that he, he has played to earn it. well in spurts. Yep. And he has to uh, earn it back. And that's, you know, yeah. This is something that happens sometimes with coaches, usually in college, but sometimes in the pros as well, that like something's been done or something isn't clicking in terms of responsibility or you make the same mistake over and over and over. And it kind of puts you in the doghouse in terms of having to earn your way back. I don't know what that is, but something happened and it started last season and it carried through Spags and Thornhill spent a lot of time this offseason in OTAs, in camp, together, standing around, making sure they're on the same page. I don't know what it is. I don't think we will know what it is until they decide to tell us probably after he's well back in the starting role. If he ever gets back to the starting role. And I don't mean to be Debbie Downer on it, but that's really a big question right now because after that game, for him not to even get a chance to sniff the field more than he did, uh, I think says a lot about where he really is in their thought process. And when you start looking at what that's going to mean going forward, uh, I think you're in a situation where Daniel Sorensen's probably your starter for the rest of the season at this point. Yeah, as as painful as that may be, mm-hmm. that may be the situation that they're looking at. And again, you guys, we say this every week, or at least I do, not trying to run down Dan Sorensen. He's just not a free safety. He should not be playing single high. And that's that's part of the problem they run into. The problem for me is now that they've had the opposite problem, where Dan's not playing optimally anyway, uh, down at the other spot inside the box, it makes things that much harder. It absolutely does. And I really don't know what they're going to do to fix it because they don't have anybody that can really step into that role. So I don't know what they're going to do. I'm hoping that they get it figured out because they absolutely need to have two safeties that are starting caliber safeties. And while Sorensen has a role, and I think that he can be a valuable player, I don't think he has a role as, as you said, a free safety. And so Uh, They've got to get that figured out, and I don't know what they're going to do. I do think it's encouraging, though. We did hear everybody practiced, and Willie Gay was at practice, just didn't have his helmet because he's on IR. Yeah, that is a serious thing that has to be taken into consideration because when they get full strength, I think they're going to be better off for it. But at this point, I I think we just have to go with what it is and see how they are and see how the league is reacting to them. So at the end of the day – it is what it is, and we're going to get to it. So I think what we'll do, 
We'll step to our friends, and then we're going to come back. We're going to talk about where they rank in the echelons at this point. We're going to talk about our friends at Built Bar, the absolutely fantastic protein bars. If you guys haven't tried them, I don't know what you're waiting on. You need to go try them. They are great. Built Bar has nine delicious flavors, coconut, cherry, barcia, raspberry, mint brownie, double chocolate, salted caramel, strawberry, orange, cookies and cream, and German chocolate. My favorite flavor out of those is definitely salted caramel. If you haven't tried all the flavors, you can get a mixed box where you'll get two of each of the nine flavors. Not only are Built Bar flavors the best tasting, but they're healthy too. Check out the macros, 17 to 18 grams of protein, calories ranging from 130 to 80 calories, and four to five grams of sugar and four to five grams of net carbs. Order today and get the grasshopper cookie or raspberry or whatever you like. Go to build.com and use promo code LOCKED15. You'll get 15% off your order. Use promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at build.com. And it looks like Ryan is gone, so that's going to be interesting. Uh, When we start looking at what this is going to mean for this game and this Charger team going up against this Chiefs team, both of them coming off of losses, I'm not exactly sure how that's going to turn out for both teams. Uh, Really, you would hope that the Chargers would have beat the Cowboys, so they're coming into this game not feeling like they have to win, uh, chasing the Chiefs. But with the Chiefs losing two, that's going to help them in some way, shape, or form. I'm really interested to see multiple different matchups in this game. Uh, Joey Bosa versus uh, versus Orlando Brown is a huge one for me because if you look at what gave Brown such fits in the first game, it was going up against Miles Garrett. Miles Garrett, I think, is a top three D end. And I think Joey Bosa is really close to being a top three end. I'd say he's probably top five. He has the talent that is very close to being what Miles Garrett is in a lot of ways. Uh, but he's not Miles Garrett, so something to see there. And Ryan is now back. Look at that. Uh, something Sometimes just appeared on me, <laughs> and I just kept talking. So you know, it is That's what good. it is. It sounds like you're making player comps. I like that. Well, I was just saying that I think Joey Bosa is a. I hate saying it this way, but a poor, poor man's Miles Garrett. I think Joey Bosa is very good, but I don't think he's on the same level as Miles Garrett. And that's my biggest matchup for this game. Yeah, I can understand that. He's he's unique in that I think there was a time when he was on, um, you know, the trajectory to be up there with Miles Garrett. Um, I think the injuries have sidelined him a little bit to the point where I think his little brother is actually a little bit better than he is at this mm-hmm. point. But he is still formidable in every way, shape, and form just because he's not an elite top three talent at the position any longer. He's still very, very good. And quite frankly, going against a guy that is functionally a rookie – I think is going to be problematic. I agree with you. That is one of the keys that they have to watch. Oh, you're talking about Niang. I was talking about going up against Orlando Brown. Yeah, I'm guessing that that's not what we see. I would su- suggest, and I would guess that we're going to see the opposite. Yeah, and that wouldn't shock me. Uh, I think that that would be a good move on the Chargers' part. Uh, I don't think they have a defensive end that's going to uh, really give Niang trouble on the other side if it's not Bosa so then you put him up against Orlando Brown and put Bosa on Niang and that's going to be problematic I would I would imagine yeah I, I would agree it's it's going to be there are things around. you can do exactly there, there are compensations that you can make do, do they need to do they want to would you like to be able to leave your tackles on an island yes um will Andy probably do that more often than I would Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, and that's the problem. Like, honestly, I, I look at this and, and there I go again saying, honestly, my apologies. But that's the thing that's the problem for me is that Andy does generally put his players in the best position to be successful. But when it comes to tackles, he doesn't really do that. Uh, and I really wish that he would take the time with, you know, somebody like Niang and somebody like even Brown going against Miles Garrett. It would have been uh, very good for him to, you know, use the tight ends to chip. Yeah, I, I think so as well. And, and maybe we see more of that. I don't think that it was an issue before, but I think if we see a series or two where especially Niang does see Bosa one-on-one, I think we're going to see that change. The other matchup for me is the opposite. Austin Eckler has done a lot of damage against this roster in the last couple of years. He's wiry. They can't stop the run the last two weeks, right? Right. <laughs> Uh, They haven't been able to stop the run the last couple of weeks. And Eckler is not only good between the tackles, but he's a great pass catcher out of the backfield. And he has a a mismatch in terms of speed on both of uh, Nick Bolden and Anthony Hitchens. So that makes things very, very difficult. I don't know if they have anything that they're going to be able to figure out. Yeah, it's going to be a big question. 
I'm not sure what they're going to do in that regard. Uh, one of the other matchups that I'm lo looking forward to is just being able to see what Herbert's able to do against the secondary going into his second year. Yeah. It, he's, he's going to be challenged. I think I, it's one of those deals that as they move forward, they are coming together, but Tyron with two picks last week, you know, after coming back, Herbert's got the gun. He's got, I think, I feel like he had something that helped him in, ter in terms of play calling, in terms of the philosophy that helped him as a rookie that isn't necessarily there right now. It is something that I think is going to take over whether he can be successful this season or not. It, it will become, I think, the primary story about the success or lack of success for Justin. And I, for one, think that he can pull that off. So uh, while Chris is obviously dealing with some issues as well, sorry for all the technical difficulties today, everyone, but we're going to keep going through. And I have something I do want to share with everybody uh, because at the end of the day, uh, you have to come down to these symptoms do rear their heads in the way that the team is recognized or not in a lot of cases. And that is true of our rankings over on Locked On, the network. And this is, uh, Chris and I are voters, so are a lot of the other hosts across the Locked On network. And this is the power ranks for this week. And you see that the Chargers fell a little bit. Uh, they, they were up at, uh, what was it, 13 the week before? Uh, no, I lied. <laughs> they fell 11 spots, not one. Uh, so very, very elite week one. They fell quite a bit. Chiefs fell as well. That's what happens when you lose. Uh, I was a little bit surprised, though, that when you have the Ravens as a top five team, did that stand out to you? That nobody vaulted the Ravens over the Chiefs after having just beaten them? Uh, I don't think so. I think that what they're looking at is Kansas City probably has a better roster. Well, they have the better quarterback. Uh, it didn't it seem to matter in this game, and that's frustrating, but I still think Kansas City's the better team, although I understand why people would make the argument the Ravens should be above the Chiefs. The other thing that really stands out to me, though, is if you look at the Chargers, they lost to a team that's right above them. They're ranked 13th. The Cowboys jumped 14 spots. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, they were... I'm sorry, no. The Cowboys were ranked 14th last year, last week, so they just jumped one spot. I apologize. They just jumped over the Chargers. So, to me, the Chargers were 11, dropped to 14, so they dropped three. Cowboys jumped one when they beat the Chargers. I mean, that, that kind of makes sense. Uh, the Ravens were at nine. I don't think that that's probably wrong. I don't think that's wrong necessarily. I don't think that – I think that they're a great team. I think they can be a good team, but uh, I think injuries are going to derail their season at some point. Uh, and I do think that they were on their best game and doing anything they could to be successful this past week. Yeah, I agree with you. Injuries are always a concern there, as they are with Los Angeles. And at the end of the day, I think the reason I'm okay that the Chiefs fell one, I didn't vote them into that place, but. When you come off a loss, that's that's the repercussion. You don't want to fall. I think they should have fallen further, personally. Do you? Okay, yep. that's fair. Yep. Uh, I I really I like what the Rams have done from what I've seen so far this season. So I think they're a fantastic team. Uh, that's going to be a great game, the Rams and the Bucks. Uh, and I still, I mean, I get why the Bills are at five, um, and I I guess I question why the Ravens are at, are at five, and I'm sorry, the Bills are at four. But you know, I was kind of surprised Kansas City didn't fall down into, you know, at least seven, eight, nine range. Um, mm -hmm. I think the Cardinals look like they're a very good team so far. Uh, the Raiders are two and O oh. uh, the chiefs are chasing them right now. Yeah. We're, we're going to talk about the Raiders coming up because that's, there's a lot going on there and a lot to unpack getting past the chargers is going to be, I think the first thing that they're going to have to face. We're going to get into what the keys are that we're going to have to get done in order to get the team a win. And then we're going to give you our predictions when we get back from this one. Two weeks into the regular season, and there's still time to make the most of it with a better way to create your custom pool at runyourpool.com, the premier sport, sports pool hosting service. Run Your Pool makes it very easy to run a football pool with friends, family, or office mates. They offer dozens of formats, including Survivor, which I really enjoy uh, doing, Pick'em, Squares, Margin, Confidence Pools, 33, and more. Run Your Pool hosts formats for NFL and college football, so you can do it uh, sometimes one week at a time, full season playoffs or the Super Bowl, whatever you want to do. Unlike other fancy sports platforms, Run Your Pool has options and settings to make it your own. You can even brand your pool for your local business, bar, or restaurant. Reconnect with your friends and join 2 million 
football fans to make every game action-packed this season. It's not too late to start a pick em or survivor pool. For survivor leagues that have already lost, we offer revival pools where you can restart your pool at a discount. Uh, yeah, I am horrible at survivor pools from time to time, so definitely would need to use that as well. If you look at how week two shook out for the public, they went 10 and 6 in pick em, and only 10% of the pools were knocked out in survivor. Still, now that about a third of the survivor pools are finished, which means a ton of them lost week one, the revival pools are starting. Check them out today and get $10 off at runyourpool.com slash locked on or use our promo code locked on at checkout. Anywhere, everywhere in the world, Run Your Pool helps friends and colleagues compete. Don't miss out. The NFL off, the NFL season is off to an exciting start. So go to runyourpool.com slash locked on and have your pool up and running in minutes. Runyourpool.com slash locked on. And they're back, and they're better than ever. All the teams, the entire NFL is on fire. And as always, betonline.ag is your number one spot to put all your pro and college football action into play this season. With a new updated interface, better odds and props and contests, you can see it all, the number one source for everything football. Head over to their website, get signed up, and you'll get a 100% welcome bonus. Uh, that's double your initial deposit. You put it in, they put it in just as easily. Don't forget to use that promo code Locked On NFL or NFL 100 in this case. Locked On is going to be the next one I'll tell you about. And it's not just football. You can play those other sports that don't seem to matter to anyone around here, but that's okay. Uh, <laughs> everything is there with our promo code Locked On uh, over at Bet Online, the fastest, easiest way to get all of your sports action into all of your favorite sports. BetOnline.ag, your online sportsbook experts. So we come it, down to this. Put it on the line. Put it on the line. Instantaneously. Yeah. <laughs> Instantaneously <laughs> on the line. Oh, God. If you guys have not seen that clip, you need to go watch it, and you'll understand why it's so funny every single time. Yeah, that's a good time. Uh, at this point, it, it just comes down to, after everything they went through last week and everything that they're facing, a, a, an in-division foe that has the talent to rival them, I think this is more than just bouncing back from a bad game against the Ravens. I think this is this is a statement, and it's got to be. And so the key for me, first and foremost, is to take away their enthusiasm, take their will. They got to get out to a hot start. And I don't care if it starts on defense. It likely will if they win the toss. They have to go attack Herbert right now from the get-go and get the defense on a positive note. I think that will help them through the day. It didn't seem to help them against the Ravens. I agree with you, though. That's what they need to do. Uh, you know, one of the keys for me in this game is obviously, and this is an obvious one every single week, but winning the turnover battle. Kansas City was very unrealistic or, sorry, uncharacteristic. That's the word I'm looking for. Last week when they turned the ball over twice against the Ravens, and that cost them at least six points mm -hmm. uh, because they were in field goal range or would have been in field goal range with a short completion on Mahomes' interception. And they were almost in field goal range with Clyde's fumble. So at that point, you have to get points on the board. That cost them six points easily, if not more. And that cost them the game. Yeah. There are a lot of factors that are going to go. There's a revenge factor. There is, I, I think, quite frankly, for the Chargers, there's a lot of, hey, maybe they're susceptible. Maybe this is we take advantage of it from their perspective. And so I think not only – do we have to see continued good O-line play? But I think that we have to see continued control from Patrick Mahomes. I, th I was pretty happy with that against the Ravens. Obviously, the interception was not uh, a well-advised play. But in terms of pass selection, target selection, I thought he did a very good job. The only thing he didn't do is get Clyde into the pass game. And I think whether it's screen game or whether it's it's Mahomes choosing to hit the flares or whatever he's assigned to, I think you got to get the back going and see if you can take advantage of it. I can't argue with that. I think the thing that frustrates me is that Andy Reid hasn't done it. Like, they haven't tried to use the screen game. I, I would think that that would be something that, that Andy Reid would use as a staple. So I am just in shock that they haven't used that so far. I'm really hoping that they start trying to get Clyde involved in the passing game because I think he, is, he can be fantastic at it. And when he is out in space, I think he's at his best. So I do think that that plays to his strength. You know, one of the other keys to me is, you know, you talked about getting to Herbert early, and I do think that that's a huge key. The bigger question I have is, how is this run defense going to show up against Eckler? 
and any of the other running backs that the Chargers put out there. Because if they can at least slow down the run, they don't have to stop the run. They can let them get 120, 130 yards. Yeah, I know you won't be happy about it, Ryan, but the reality is this run defense is very bad. So 120 to 130 yards for a game is probably good for this defense. And if they can do that, then they're going to be able to have enough possessions to where they'll be able to score over 30 points again. And I do think that they have the ability to win this game if they can do that. Yeah, it's survivable at that point, and that's really all that matters. Yeah. And I agree with you there. Um, I think they will. They won't be forced into base as much in in trying to guard against so much power runs uh, and so many things between the tackles. I think you're going to see uh, them be able to get into their dime package more. Uh, like we talked about Juan Thornhill at the top of the show, while he won't start, I think he will play more. I think he has to in order to defend this team. They do have targets in the pass game. Um, and for me, the last thing that I have to see is if they choose to put Derwin on Travis Kelsey, that'll be the toughest one-on-one matchup that Travis has this season. I still think he can win that. But if not, I need to see continued improvement from D-Rob, Hardman, and Pringle as a trio to make up that other target. Absolutely. And I do think that that's something that you're going to see. I, you know, I talked about this a lot on the crossover and uh, David talked about them putting Derwin James on Travis Kelsey. He said that he doesn't think they'll do it the entire game, but they could put him on there from time to time. I really think that that's probably not going to work in their best behavior or work in their favor if they do that, because then you're taking an all world safety that can do just about anything on the back end of your defense and you're taking him out of coverage to try to tie up Travis Kelsey. Yes, you want to stop Kelsey, but I would think that you'd be better off bracketing Kelsey to try to stop him as opposed to doing it the other way. Well, and at the end of the day, you're you're not going to stop him. You're not going to shut right. him down. He's going to get his. So I agree with you. I think the playmaking ability probably stands out more uh, in the open field rather than lined up you know, closer to the line of scrimmage on Kelsey, but we'll see what they do. At the end of the day, I feel like this is this is a team that needs to have an attitude. Absolutely. Um, evidently, Clyde's running with an attitude, according to Eric Bieniemy. I hope that that's true. Um, you know, you never know what you get on on Thursday pressers after a bad loss. There's a lot of overly positive and hey, it's not time to worry kind of talk right now. I want to see them show like they're worried. I want to see some aggression. I think at the end that they do. I I agree with you. I think they go over 30 points again. I'm going to call it 34-28, but I do think that they get a win against the Chargers. I think they win. I don't know exactly what I think the score is going to be. I'm going to go 35, 27 or 35, 30. I do think, I think the chargers have the ability to put 30 points up on this defense. I mean, honestly, and yeah, I really do mean honestly in this case, I could see the chargers putting up 40 in this game Mm -hmm. Uh, with as bad as the defense played against the Baltimore Ravens, the chargers, I think have a better offense and they have more pieces and they have a better quarterback when it comes to throwing the ball. Uh, Jackson is good when he's running, and I do think he is an okay passer, but he's not on the same level as Herbert, in my opinion. Right. Uh, and when you're starting to look at what they have as their pass catchers, they have a lot more weapons than the Ravens did as well, uh, at least at this time. The Ravens will have more later in the season. Uh, so I, I do think that it's going to be a very good game, and I think that they could score more than 40. Uh, if they do, Kansas City, I would imagine, is also going to score more than 40. Uh, but you know, is can the offense punch it in when they get the opportunity? That's going to be the question. We'd like to know what you think of that and give us your answer on the YouTube comments, on the iTunes reviews. Let us know what you think. We appreciate everything that you guys have been doing for us. Make sure you like and sub and hit the bell on YouTube and leave us those iTunes reviews. That helps us get the feedback that we need to make this show better, just like we're always trying to do. I hope you guys are ready. Enjoy your Red Friday. We'll be back with you post-game. Enjoy it, and we'll talk to you then.